Alright, so this is a uh, video recording for Burger Misi. Sorry if I'm not pronouncing your name correctly. Uh, from the Unreal Engine 4 Developers Community Forums on Facebook. Um, he had a problem in regards to um, spawning obstacles in his uh, Forever Runner game. Where in some cases it would spawn um, an object in every lane, thus creating like a Yara is gonna fail state for the player. So um, I took a look at his uh, blueprint image that he sent and took a little bit of a different approach but it should give you more control as well over what is being spawned at what time so um, here's a little preview um, you can spawn it by hand now and you can basically see like okay what is it spawning at the moment these are all row 1, row 2, row 3 and then I've set it that after row 10, it will spawn at least three objects. Um, since it's only four lanes, uh, we can kind of predict the options that are possible. Um, so I'm going to explain how I set this up for you and how you can control it for future usage as well. So. I did a few things beforehand. I made a data table, and if you're unfamiliar with data tables, um, just look it up on uh, the Unreal forums or Unreal itself. It's fairly easy. Basically, just like a, a table that is made up out of structs. You can make it any structs you want, essentially. Um, so, to begin with, um, I made an enum, which is like a drop down with options. So I've made easy, medium, and hard. You just hit the new button and then give it a display name. Then I also made a struct um, that holds four booleans. Uh, row one, two, three, and four, or lane one, two, three, and four, whatever you want to call it. And then I combine these two in a new struct that holds the um, enum and an array of the row option struct. So essentially what you get is um, you can create all the options that you want for the easy difficulty, right? These are all the easy uh, rows that can be spawned, which essentially is always just one. And these are the only options that one obstacle spawned in four rows can be. Um, so then I created a data table that essentially holds all the options that can happen within four lanes. If you want to create something with five or six lanes, it will be a little bit more difficult or a little bit more work um, because you have a lot more options in that case, but it's not impossible. Um, but a different approach might be better in that case. Um, okay, so let's go through these. Uh, easy. Set the row difficulty to easy. I named the row in the table easy as well. Um, so we can use the uh, enum in the blueprint to find the row that we want to have. So easy is always just one. There are only four options because there are only four rows. Medium is spawning two obstacles, which has six different possibilities. As you can see. It's like two at the bottom, two in the middle, two at the or two at the top, middle and bottom. And then there's a split on the outer ones. And there's a split on the bottom and then the second and there's a split at the top and the third. That's all the options for medium and then the hard. There are only four options as well, which is three to top, uh, three at the bottom, and then two at the top, one at the bottom split, and then two at the bottom, one at the top split. Those are all the options that we can spawn essentially. Uh, when we're working with four rows or lanes. So that's kind of like the pre-work that we have to do. And then we're going to look into the row spawner blueprint. That will be the one that you have essentially. Um, I just gave it 
uh, arrow objects uh, arrow objects instead of scene objects. Um, I've had some issues with scene objects or scene components before, so I usually use like arrow components. And then the text render is just to make it easy to see where it spawns what. Um, those are not important by any means. So when we go into Vengraph, um, the things I'm doing here are kind of obsolete because I just changed something because I did have the same issue of things not spawning accordingly. Um, but what I'm doing here is just creating an array for all the lane objects. So it's easier to access everything. And then um, making sure that the counter for the amount of rows that have him spawned starts at zero. And then uh, I've made a custom event called spawn row, which has the, uh, let's see, can I show that? Interesting. Right, I think it's this one, call an editor, that creates um, this little button here. So you can, in the editor, just call it. Uh, alternatively, if you just want to be able to test quicker without uh, clicking it 10,000 times, you can do a timer by event. What that essentially does is it creates uh, a timer that is, uh, you basically call this once at the start, and then you set time to be, I don't know, five seconds. And then looping to true, so every, it's gonna count every, gonna come down every five seconds to zero, and then it loops again and again and again, and then it's gonna trigger this event. You hook this up every time, so every five seconds, this event will be called essentially. Um, let's see. So, start off with clear objects. Um, at the end. I register all the obstacles that have been spawned into an array and make sure that the array is cleared and all the actors inside of it is destroyed or are destroyed. Um, you'll probably already have something in place. Uh, but this is just like my kind of way to clean it up every time. Otherwise, I'll have like 10,000 things spawned at some point. And I don't want to deal with that. Um, this one I'm currently not using anymore. Oh, I can unhook that. Um, okay, so every time spawn row is being called, I add one increment to the row spawn, row spawn amount. So that starts at zero. This is executed, puts it on one. If you're unfamiliar with this node, it essentially is dragging off of that, hitting plus twice, and then there's increment int. That essentially just like adds one to whatever this total is at that point in time. Um, so this is the point where I control the difficulty change after 10 rows being spawned. So it checks if it's bigger than 10. If it's bigger than 10, it sets the difficulty row enum to hard, which is a variable that I've added to this blueprint. If it's false, it will just go directly to get data table row. So the get data table row, you need a, the data table as a variable that we've created, which is this one. And we just drag off of it, do get data table row. And then the row names, since I named them exactly the same as the enum options, I can use the enum to get the specific row name that I want. Um, you cannot hook this up in directly because an enum essentially the options are zero, one, two, three, and it doesn't care about the name. If you want the name specifically, you have to convert it to a string first and then convert the string into a name uh, very, or type, I guess and then you can hook it up. So it will get easy, medium, hard instead of zero, one, two. Um, so in this case, if it's bigger than 10, it will set this to hard. So this will be hard. Converts it to the string, converts it into the name. So it gets the hard row, which is the third one in this option. 
which are all of these. So since um, it's a string, or sorry, a struct, you have to break it to get to the data that's inside of it. Um, and then when you break it, you get row difficulty and difficulty row options array. That's because this is an array. You can add m more options, I guess, if there were any. Um, and that's all dictated by this uh, variable in the row spawner struct. And then you just change it to an array in here. Because it will by default be a single variable, but we want multiple options. So that's why it's an array. Um, so we break it. And then we get the array, and you want to get a specific option from that array. So we want either 0, 1, 2, or 3. Um, but we don't know if we want to... We kind of want to randomize that. Excuse me. And we don't know exactly how many options there are, because there are 6 in the medium difficulty, and there are only 4 in the hard and easy one. So... The way we solve that is we get the last index of the array, which for hard is 3. And then we get a random integer in the range of 0 to 3. And then it basically gets uh, one of the four options in that case. And then it um, sets that to a variable that I've created. So essentially, when we play, we can see what it is spawning. I think it should spawn automatically now. That's only just that. Yeah, there we go. So that's only to check. So every five seconds now, it's going to spawn a new one. That's the second row. Third row. And as soon as it hits 10, it will start spawning the uh, three row object essentially which will take a little bit because I only set the timer to be five seconds instead of it being one which will be a little bit easier and quicker to check um, but we're almost there nine right and then ten is still the easy thing and then eleven is gonna be three there we go. Then you can see, I guess, three, all three of the checkboxes. And it's going to just randomly pick one from the options. Um, you don't really have a lot of control over that. Um, essentially, you can build a more elaborate chance calculation for that. Like, kind of like what you had before with like the type of object that's being spawned, which I am using somewhere else. Um, only creating those ranges more dynamically is a little bit harder and is not something that I focused on directly for this solution, uh, but we'll get to that later. So essentially I set it to a variable just to be able to read it in the ed editor. Uh, so you don't necessarily need this. Um, so you can also just do like that. So you get one of the random ones, you break it because it's a struct, and in order to get the information from the struct, you need to break it. And then you get the four lanes or row options that basically are set with these checkboxes. True means that it will be spawned, and false will mean it's not going to be spawned. I'm just going to hook this up again. All right, so now we do a sequence. Um, that will, instead of doing the cascading thing, it will just go first, uh, first is then zero, then one, then two, then three. Um, so in that case, like, we can't get any weird issues of, oh, if it's set to true, it's gonna skip it, essentially, because we wanna check all the lanes. Um, so we hook that up to a branch, and if it's true, it spawns an obstacle, and we'll go into this uh, function a little bit. And if it's false, it's not gonna do anything it's not going to spawn anything. So that's the main uh, event graph, essentially. 
So I, I do have uh, two functions that we use. Uh, the first one is spot an obstacle as a function. Because if we're going to do the same thing every time, then might as well make it a function to make it easier for ourselves. So, um, it has one input that you can add when you select the, uh, I don't know what's the, what this is called, entry point, I guess. Uh, you just hit the plus sign and then we want a lane object. In this case, it's an arrow component. You can change that to scene component or it can be an actual in-world actor. Um, so you can get, I don't know, if you have like a side view version and you have like, uh, let's see, say you have like a side view version and then you have like rows like this. So you have it vertically instead of horizontally. And then you have to like jump up or go down. Might be an interesting other direction that you can take it in. And if you want that, then either you have to change the lane position in the blueprint. Or you can just make them actors and then you can change them on the fly. Um, but yeah, that, whichever you prefer. So in this case, that goes in, gets will transform, kind of like what you had in your example, and spawns the actor. So what it spawns kind of happens in this little part. Um, it's not much different from what you had. I just made it a uh, function that we can reuse. So it randomly generates a float in a range from 0 to 1. And that is entered into this function. So as you can see, it has a low range, mid-low range, mid-high range, and high range. So if we go into here, essentially what happens is the same thing that you have. Um, so the generate float is being checked what value it is. So low range is the 0 0.2. You can set that to whatever you want, but like if it's equal or less than 0 0.2, puts it to uh, true and does a return node of zero. If it's in the mid-low range, which was, oh, excuse me, uh, 0 0.21 to 0 0.45. And essentially this is a vector 2D and that breaks up into X and Y. And X in this case is the low range and Y is the higher range or like it's min and max. So that way, instead of adding like, I don't know, eight floats, you can just hook this, uh, make this like a single variable, essentially. We'll make it a little bit easier to control and you don't have as many variables flying around in the world. Um, so yeah, that just goes into the in range. Second what you have, does it check if it's true, it outputs one. If it's not the in the if your generated float is not in this range, then it goes to the third one. The exact same thing. Um, if it's not in that range, it goes into the high range, and that's everything above. Um, essentially, you can probably just do bigger than. And then just take the highest point in this one. So in that case, anything above the highest value of your mid-high range will automatically fall into the range output 3. Which will give you less things to manage. But, on the other hand, say if you want to... No, you always want to spawn something here. Right, okay, yeah, so you can basically do that. That would also remove this high range. And you can do, you can do the same thing with low range. Just take the X value of the mid-low range and do everything that's lower than this value should output zero. So in that case, you only have these two variables that you have to manage in this function. Um, so the way to get like multiple return nodes in a function is to just do return and you just copy and paste it as many times as you want um like it will only execute one it will go to one return node essentially it will only pick one of one of these at one time you can you don't 
it's not possible to get uh, you know function something that returns x and y as a random example so you only pick one of these at all times so what this essentially does is it outputs a integer and that integer goes into this variable that I've made which essentially are your obstacle classes so in your example you had uh, let's see I still have it open So that's these things essentially. Yeah, like you duplicated this every time, and instead of it being duplicated every time for each of the lanes, this is now reusable for all of the lanes. So instead of the spawn actor being duplicated three times, you just get one of these objects, and you can make eight of these, but you would have to change your float range output. In order for it to um, be able to cope with that so this still could use a little bit more improvement so it kind of depends on what kind of obstacles or how many obstacles you're gonna have you want to spawn but this is workable and expandable uh, once you get your head around it um, so it just gets zero one two or three and you can just set this to any obstacle you want and that puts it in the spawn actor class and it already gets the lane object will position or will transform puts it in there and then adds it in the end to the obstacles array which is the one i showed you earlier that it cleans it um which is just a variable and then actor and then hit this little thingy when it's on uh by default it's on this one you just hit it click on the block and then it's an array. You just add it there. And basically that should be it. So yeah, it's just this function and this function that's inside of that. And that would be it. So now essentially you have control over when it starts spawning medium, easy or hard. And you can make a function for that as well. So you can essentially create something that is similarly this. What you would do is let's see, select these, collapse the function, difficulty selector. Now we're going to call this. Front row to be spawn. And we want this as a variable. So what you can do is like click and drag on it and then make sure it's just underneath it where it hits the green check mark. So where it says add pin to node. And it creates a new input variable. And then for this one, it will be change difficulty after row amount you should be able to set this kind of stuff dynamically and also want to have that that the same For now we will scoot this up a little bit Essentially, should be able to do something like so change difficulty after Roma. So from zero, it's going to be easy. So properly uh, for a reroute note, what I usually do, you can do two things. If it already exists, just double click it. And otherwise, if you drag off of it, just type in RER. -E there's at reroute node at the bottom, just hit enter. So that'll be nice and easy to keep your um, graphs manageable. So after row 10, oh, let's do five, We're test testing. 
I want this to become medium. And then... Set this to 10. And then set this to hard. Make sure we don't forget to hook this up. So like to clean this kind of stuff up even more, you can just select all of these. Because this is essentially... Right? This is a spawn mechanic. This is difficulty selection for the rows. Difficulty selection for rows. But what you can also do is to clean it up a little bit more is select all of them, cluster function, that's spawn mechanic. And then instead of having like a giant or like a fairly big event graph, you have these all segmented into their own like logical things. So once this is set up, you never should have to ever like change anything about this unless you create a version that has more uh, rows or lanes. Then this is a little bit finicky and it could be improved logically, but if you just want to stick for four rows, this should work fine. Well, let's do a little test, see what happens. Let's see, so one, 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 five. There we go, so now it's a medium. Did it go to hard earlier than I thought it would? Four, five, medium, two, 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 three. There we go. So now you can incrementally make things harder or easier. Um, you can kind of like control how quickly things become harder, that kind of stuff. And you can also just like expand on this, right? So. You can imagine creating uh, maybe a data table that has like an order of things. So it's like, okay, first zero to 10 goes from um, easy, zero, like the first two are easy, then the third to fifth are medium, and then it goes back to easy, then it goes back to hard. So you can like kind of like pre-program a lot of these things. And you can use a data table in the same way um, so you get like, get the data table, get, uh, you know, easy zero one, which is one of the rows that you've named. And then you basically make a array of row difficulty and then you just click how many you think you need, um, how many changes. It kind of depends on how you want to set up your game. And then before you do this, or instead of this, you can make a variable that changes that, or a function that changes that difficulty dynamically, or that reads it from that data table before you do your spawn mechanic. Um, yeah, that would be pretty much it. So lane spawn check I did not use. Uh, it says that it's in use, but it shouldn't. Oh, right, it's bottom at the bottom here. Don't use any of that. I'll... Where am I using this then? Ah. So it's always good to clean things up to make sure that you don't have stuff in there that you're not actually using. And you just do a right click, find references. And then you can see, I'm only setting this here, I'm not really using it, but with these kind of things, it's never bad to just make an array out of it on begin play. You never know when you might want to use it. But yeah, I think that would pretty much be it. What we can also do is just switch these. So now it goes from easy to hard to medium. That was hard. 
And that's medium. So I hope this uh, kind of helped you. Um, in terms of like, if you're unfamiliar with creating structs and enums, um, there are a bunch of tutorials on it. But for the sake of easiness, it's uh, in the blueprints category. And then just hit enumeration or structure. And for the data table, you go to miscellaneous and then it's up here. Yeah, so I hope this helps. And uh, let me know if you have any other questions, dude. Good luck.